Next then, mm -hmm. we have nine two splash screens with some uh, pretty art. Here is like the sort of launch day splash screen. So whenever you log in, this will be the thing that tells you about the new features. Cypher, Torgas, boss mode, and Seraph Mortis. Yeah, and then of course for week three, we've got the Sepulcher coming out. We've got um, the class sets. We've got season three. Now, I did not know this. Mm -hmm. Final epilogue chapter removed? What? Removed from uh, asterisk. You click bit and bastard deck. Yeah. What? Oh, Continue. interesting. Yep. Uh, well, I don't know this document. Yep. <laughs> While it may be a temporary PTR thing, they seem to have removed Chapter 8 of the Zareth Mortis campaign, which is called Epilogue Judgment. Judgment. I wonder what character is going to be judged. Now, this is speculated to be the epilogue where Sylvanas would receive her judgment at the hands of Toronto. Uh, both of those characters received higher cinematic models plus animations. But the achievement is still intact, so basically, who knows? Who knows? And maybe it means that this chapter has been instead moved over to patch 9.2.5, meaning that, um, you know, it will be more of a systems patch. Or sorry, more than just a systems patch. Possibly. Sorry, I just got a phone call. I should say it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Michelle, one second. Yeah, no, so there's um there's a couple of things I'm thinking here about this, which uh, one, of course, is, okay, maybe it's a bug. Maybe uh, they're moving it out of the achievement. Maybe they're moving it out of the campaign because they want to do campaign skips that skips that doesn't skip the epilogue judgment. Mm. Maybe they're playing around with that because I know they clearly have problems with skipping campaign stuff because they don't have a covenant campaign skip and a nine point one campaign skip. So I think they have like some technical issues there. So I think Game's that's spaghetti. Yeah, so I think that's I think that's interesting where it could be in a proper epilogue patch. Or it could just be outside of the campaign system to be its own little thing afterwards, yeah. which would maybe solve other problems. Well, look, but I, I mean, what I would love is for n just like make 925 an epilogue patch yeah. and maybe try to expand time walking a little bit. Give us some simple systems, content wrap, whatever that's like yeah. cheap to make that people could kind of just do for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, try to do all of that. Um and then delay the next expansion by another quarter so that it has more time in the oven. I know that a lot of people will think, well, I want my money for the sub, to which I just say, well, I want the game to be as good as possible, and it's okay to unsub. Yep. I mean, less okay with the six-month rolling sub that they're <laughs> trying to get everyone into, yeah. but, you, you know, you get my feel. Yep. Yeah, all right. BOA Soul Cinders, this is just good. It obviously should have been there in 9.1.5, yep. but anyway, it's good that it is coming here. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Bonesmith, uh, hi, Mir. In Corthia sells a few new items in uh, the latest 9.2 PTR build. So, Package Soul Cinders, which is similar to the Package Soul Ash, where it costs 300, but of course there is a little bit of taxation where it costs 300 and it gives you 250. Yeah, of course, is, Dark Wars uh, no, giving this us... Is, this is my call it segment from my oh. Yep. Oh. Yeah, this is mine, not yours. So, not here, um, here, everyone, we are getting a, uh, a glimpse into the mind of Matt. Yep. What does he say? He says, Why? Come on, please, stop this! I understand you want players to do content on the new character, but why are you taking away the currency they worked for? Let us have it. It's not a big deal, but it speaks to a desire for control. If we want to play the class we like more, slash is better than Torghast, let us. The box of many things isn't account bound, so having one strong Torghast effective character to farm the Ash and Cinders for the other classes is a great possibility. Let us have it. Yes. Yep. I like your happy box. Yep. Absolutely. And that's the thing, it's like, I really want to emphasize this is not a huge deal. It's just one of those little things that's just like another, you know, it's another Lego on the floor of playing the game, which is I'm farming this currency, you're taking it away. That is literally what you're doing. And I think that's like, you know, that's fine. I know what you're trying to do. I think there's more potential in me, you know, as an, ex as an example, I, you know, was doing a bunch of uh, Torghast for Soul Ash on Shaman. I was like, this is pretty inefficient. I could do it on my Paladin a lot faster, on a higher layer, get more Soul Ash and funnel it back. Okay, I'll do that. I guess I don't play my Shaman so much in Torghast, but I have progress in the box of many things in on my Paladin, so I don't want to, you know, I don't have to regrind the box of many things. Torghast is no longer mandatory on that Shaman, so that's good. So like, just, just do, let us do that, but not feel that twinge of, haha, you're doing it wrong, whenever you waste 50. I think that's the thing, because I mean 50, especially when you're looking at costs of 1,600 soul cinders, you're losing 250. Or no, you're losing 300 total. And you're like, okay, well, I'm paying actually, you know, a sixth. That's pretty substantial. Yeah. I'm, I'm spending, I'm losing, well, like two, one, two, three Torghast runs 
of my time, which is, you know, if you're going for uh, like flawless stuff, you're looking at, oh yeah, I've just lost an R to you arbitrarily taking away some soul centers. Or like, you know, that's, f I see what you're doing. I just sort of wish you wouldn't. And yeah. give, give us more freedom to play the game the way we want to. Yeah, no, I, I entirely agree with you. Yeah. There's also the Chronicle of Lost Memories, which costs 600 cinders and discovers a random legendary power for your class that you don't already have. Yep. So uh, there's that. Hmm. Um, I, I guess, I don't know. I Maybe if there was a more expensive one that just let you directly get the power you want, because I know yeah. for so many people, it's like, all right, new character. This is the Lego that we use, because yeah. that's how the system's balanced. Just let me get that one. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, if, I mean, to which loads of people just say, well, just do the fucking content, which, yeah. okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, anyway, right, there's that. So um, what else? Right. Well, the new BOA uh, Cinder tokens may not be useful to people who have already got all the legendaries they want at max uh, level across their characters. They will allow anybody to get, uh, you know, finish off their neglected ones or help get some alts up to speed. Also note that if you want to craft the new double legendary in a slot other than the belt, you have to get uh, the belt that you get in the campaign. You will need some cinders to do so. Now, although the Chronicle of Lost Memories could already be purchased using other currencies, being able to purchase it from Soul Cinders is very nice, especially with the new BOA Soul Cinder tokens, meaning that there is uh, less of a need to farm Corthia or Covenant dailies on alts. Because, uh, you know, it costs 35 grateful offerings from the Covenant Quartermaster or 2,000 catalog research from the Archivist Codex. Uh, now, next, then, there's a new item level 226 necklace BOA token, right? So um, we've reported on these I level 226 BOA gear tokens a while back. At the time, there was no necklace uh, token. There now is one, so this is not a, uh, a major change, but it does mean you can get yourself a full set of 226s. However, the whole, you know, rings and trinkets being bundled mm. together, that still is there. Some of the issues that we uh, found with weapons, those still are there. And I just think those things don't feel that good. So I really think that's something that I would implore Blizzard uh, to take another look at. I mean... You know, you don't just say, oh, this is a head, shoulder, chest bundle. Mm. You know, it's not a head, shoulder, chest, yeah. you know, click in the token, you'll get one of those three, which would be profoundly frustrating. Mm. So I really think they should polish that up um, because, hey, what do we want? We want players to be happy. And one of the parts of that is creating less unnecessary pain points that don't yep. really gain much for the, the game. Yeah, I mean, that's you know? so, uh, yeah. like, th this is the way I look at this stuff generally it's a barrier from people playing the content they want to do. And if you think about, you know, everything that stops you from doing what you want to do is a chore. That's how, you know, yeah, that's how, that's how you frame stuff. You know, I want to eat, but I have to cook. Ah, fuck cooking. You know, happens like yeah, people now, think. And next up, yep. Steve has actually yielded his title um, and okay. uh, given it over to Mythic Plus Season 3, where, <laughs> of, <laughs> where the cryptic and the cryptic hero I mean, I think Steve, the cryptic hero, is pretty fair. Um, he does like to tease and play with us, absolutely. I can't believe that. Um, you want to get? Oh, man, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the new Mythic Plus uh, yeah. you know, achievements. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that's almost always uh, pretty damn awesome is, of course, the vicious PvP mounts. Those are the, I mean, fair enough to uh, to tally. We all want a Roly Boy. The Roly Boy is uh, pretty damn gorgeous. Um, I've just never been able to find a stable arena situation, which I would... It's just that thing. You need so much friggin' knowledge. Like, fair play to anybody who's a big WoW Arena person. WoW Arena is like a hard game. Oh, it's in the like same it. way that like Titanfall Two is a hard shooter. Lawbreakers was a hard shooter. Yeah. I'm one of the three Lawbreakers players that ever existed yeah. before that game got unreleased. Uh, but I think WoW PvP is genuinely like that. There's so much depth. There's so much counterplay. There's so much knowledge that you need. So fair enough that they get really, really cool looking mounts. And I know it's just a saddle placed on a creature, but there's just always something about them that I've, I've liked. So you get the Vicious War Croaker in either an Alliance or Horde Permutation. Um, but there's also the Progenitor Wolves. Nice wolf. um, man, those are so cool. I'm thinking that 9-2 is going to be long as a patch. You think so? Maybe it'll be a 9-2-5, but I think that's just them putting in two seasons worth. So I think there's probably going to be two more seasons left in Shadowlands. There'll be this season, and I would not be surprised if they did another season. Well, PvP or something yeah, after that. that's interesting. That's an interesting idea because, you know, you have a PvP season, and you've also got a Mythic Plus season. The PvP season's just, here's, here's more item levels and more mount reward but it's the same thing but mythic plus comes with redesigning the affix 
which is usually tied in with the you know what's happening in the patch which means that a new season without new content would only be serving m plus players and pvp players raiders and you know your know, more casual players would be left out but also why not if you i mean obviously i'm not gonna say if you only have to you know make an affix but still if you make an affix and you're like eh, yeah get some experimentation for 10.0 pvp get some new mounts and sort of. yep 1k rating hmm. isn't it isn't it 1k rating that's the threshold where your wins count towards the mounts and um, well i mean that horse has put in 1400 people are saying 1000 and i vaguely remember it being 1000 uh, after a change that they made um not 100 percent sure but i know they did lower that requirement which of course was because of like there was some rating inflation and then obviously boosting completely ran a mock Mm -hmm. on uh yes yeah. yeah, so it is 1k yeah boosting completely ran a mock on pvp ratings mm -hmm. so you know me and matt is just a little duo would go in he's holy paladin i'm hunter we're both shit and okay. uh you know we'd be like oh yeah here's one player who i think we could fight and oh it's a golden god yeah <laughs> what are we ever going to do and then somehow one guy just kills us all and we're like ah yeah. i didn't know i could die that fast yeah um but i suppose when we last experienced that, that was when the PvP meta was like super bursty at the start of Shadowlands. I have no idea what it's like now. I haven't checked yeah. it out. Um, anyway, to Ooh. move on, quality of life changes. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, oh, so, yeah. many skinnable, mineable, and gatherable uh, enemies can now be skinned, mined, and gathered by all the players engaging in the activity who have got the correct, uh, you know, gathering skill. So, in order to help make skinning, uh, or skinning, mining, and herb uh, gathering of enemies a more group friendly experience, they've adjusted the skinning rules. Uh, basically, you know, it used to be you skin a mob, it disappears. Now, for most mobs, multiple people can skin yep. a mob. So that just good. means you can do a group farm there. And oh, obvious no. oh, no. Bots will make this awful. Definitely, <laughs> yes. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering. I remember uh, as a want to buy gold. He mm. used to be really big on... Oh, fuck, I remember they got rid of the things. The keyboardy thingy to the windows. What's it called? Auto hockey? Oh no, no shit. The the mirror thing, yeah. The the thing multi boxing. Multi -boxing. Multi oh I yeah. Yeah, did they multi -boxing. kill multi boxing the TOS? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember uh want to buy gold. He used to do that. I'm just thinking, man, if you could multi box and do this, holy shit, you would be in some money. But yep. uh look, this just means that you can do those group farms, yep. you know, hang out with the people in Discord, do a farm. You don't feel as much like you're competing with each other. Um, I think that's pretty neat. I mean, a decent example. We sort of did similar in FF14 with yeah. the treasures, treasure map. uh, the treasure maps, and that felt really good. Uh, now, I think it's just fundamentally more fun than a mob grind. But hey, oh, mob grind solo versus a mob grind with friends. Yeah. Mob grind with friends, more fun. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, like I guess treasure maps is, it's a really flashy, it's not even a mob grind, just a really flashy kill some dudes. Like, yeah, but it's flashy and cool. So. Um, then, for UI and accessibility, arena groups in the group finder will now show the party member's spec in the mouse over tooltip, and the Mythic Plus rating chat uh, links now also show the player's highest rating from a previous season. No! Which... That's oh. awful. Oh? Yeah, no, that's terrible. So that's... Oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah that, no, that, that, shit, uh, you're right. Yeah, that's perfectly fine for people <laughs> who have a previous rating. But if you look at that as a actual thing, then that means, oh, sorry, you didn't play last season? Fuck you, you're not getting a group. That's a really... Ooh. I understand that that's... I can understand the utility for this. Yes. And as a party, as a, someone who's trying to put together a party, you'd be like, thank fuck for this. Oh my God. Now I get to see, you know, someone wasn't just like boosted this season. But it's also like, yeah, no, you're you're so scuffed. Like. I think what they need to do is really simple. And it does yeah. obviously involve taking some inspiration from Final 14. Hmm. Uh, Final 14. Final yes, 14. Final Fantasy 14. So yeah. in the party finder, not like the random duty finder, the party finder. Yeah. Um, if you are eligible to join a party, mm. like in WoW, you know, you hit the yeah. apply button and then somebody gets to accept or decline you. Mm. In FF, if you hit the requirements, you don't hit apply, you hit join and you're join. in the party. Because as far as the game is concerned, you deserve to be there. You yeah. met the requirements. So how about they make it a Mythic Plus so that you can say, these are the specs that I want. Yep. Um, literally copy the party finder just copy the party finder and you know if you fit that spec you're allowed in yeah and then that i think would vastly improve the user experience because i mean it doesn't impact me that much because i play in a guild but i know for so many people and the time when i was also guildless yeah. you know when you just click 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 decline 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 accept you go into the accept you you know wait there for it it's just you know 
yeah. not ideal. And I like how the FF uh, well system is. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's the thing. You know, uh, uh, David says comp kind of matters in Modo. That's the point. You can fine tune the comp you want, and then people will join. Yeah, exactly. You, so you literally pick, I want this, 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 and this, and then those people be allowed to click and join. And you, you know, you do that with item level re requirements. You do that with, you know, uh, you could, you know, do it with mythic rating requirements. And then there you go, you're sorted. Obviously, you'd put it a bit, you might end up putting it a bit high and that'll be exclusionary, but still way better than, ah, here's people who technically meet my requirements. I'm just going to sit and wait until I get someone who's, you know, way better than what I need because the extra damage will have it done better. See, I mean, th that's even the thing where they add the, they've added the specializations in the most of our tooltip. You're like, so like there's hmm. a few people here, like Justin says, what stops the leader from kicking hunters till uh, the leader gets a high rated hunter? Well, you set the rating required to join the party. Yeah. That's the point, yeah. right? So none of that ever happens because you will say, like in your example of a hunter, you'll say, all right, we want a survival hunter of this item level and this rating. Hit post group. So you're not going to be cycling through hunters. You know, hunter joins. Oh, they're shit. Kick. That doesn't happen because I mean, you can you do that. But, uh, you know, if, if the hunter meets the requirements that you set before you hit the post listing button, then they hmm. get in. Which yeah. means, you know, you're not saying, oh, you don't have the achievement. You don't get in. You don't have this. You don't get in. You're not yeah. doing that flow. Um, and yeah, look, it works pretty damn well in FF. Now, also, FF is like a pretty different game. So there's that, but uh, yeah, it works. Uh, right, the next thing, this is a big change, everyone, different game. Uh, WoW will never be the same because the quest log now displays a clock icon next to quests that have got a time remaining counter. Nice. For all, you know, eight of those quests. Uh, Cac W, who needs survival hunters? Hey, unknown character, they can pump. Yeah. They can pump an M+. Plus. Um, I mean, their big thing used to be it was like uncapped, or decently yeah. uncapped AOE DPS via the bombs. Big, big AOE damage. Yeah. 